So the late of the week, what I'm going to do is is kind of talk about where we are as a club. Um, I'm going to move Lee a little bit there for just a second, Lee. Um, uh, so Troy put most of these slides together. Uh, I, I feel very present, presidential doing a state of the the uh, the society uh, presentation here. But Troy, thank you for your help getting all of this together. And I'm going to ask you and, and anybody else to jump in here and help me do this. Um, I'm going to go through some slides and just talk about where we are a little about what we are as a club, for especially for the new folks. Um, and then uh, talk about some things that are going forward. Um, I wonder if I can get that off of the screen. So what do we do as a club? You know, there, there I've heard a lot of, of amateur radio clubs that do that are good at a few things, you know, there, there are clubs that do contesting. There are clubs that do DX. We do a lot of things and, you know, almost so many things that they compete with each other every now and then, but I don't think I would have it any other way. There's a whole lot to this hobby. And I like that this club is a place that, that, uh, is, is the place you can go to do whatever you want to do in the hobby. There's, there's, we're a good size group. We got people who know how to do a lot of things in here. So just, I won't read through everything on there, but just the things that we do as a club. Um, we, the, the hand, you know, we're talking about this a little while ago when we went to the thing about the, 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 uh, who brought the pizza at the Christmas party. And uh, there's also the breakfast that we didn't put on here. I think I know what the ham part of ham radio is. Now I've learned that from the club. Um, it's, there's just a lot of things that, that we do. It, are we missing anything there? Let me ask that. What does this club do that we don't have up there? We'll make this interactive. I'd like to add something to it. Okay. You know, amateur radio, I started out in 1955. And amateur radio, in the early on, spent a lot more emphasis on what you were, your license has got for you to do. And your license allows you to build, operate, right. and maintain within the, the guidelines of the Federal Communications Commission amateur radio. Right, and you're able to talk around the world with all countries that have a reciprocal agreement. Right, and uh, I, I think that uh, when it comes to maintaining, I think there's a lot of discrepancies that may be happening anymore from some of these. Uh, the Chinese radios and so forth that have come out and they're exceeding specifications in some areas. And, and uh, I think we want to be mindful of uh, what we're supposed to be doing. Right. And, uh, so that's kind of learning the hobby. Um, when I, I give you just a minute, Al. Um, when I joined the club, I kind of stumbled into the club. My first contact was the guy who was on the screen a little while ago, Lee. My second contact was Ron. They both invited me to the club, and I found other friends I knew who were already part of it. The thing that struck me first about this club is how friendly the people were and how helpful the people were. There are a lot of people in this, in this room right now who know an awful lot about this hobby. And and I've never seen a case where we weren't willing to help and, and wanted to help it. So I know there are a lot of people who appreciate the, the mentors in the room. Um, and and we're going to get into later on what we wanted want the club to be. And I wanted to start doing some building, um, building radios, building antennas. And, and we need people like you, Charles, to help us learn to do that and some other folks in the room. So that may be it. Well, that. well, <laughs> you, you can do it. Um, um, other things that are on here. 
Uh, we try to do program good. Oh, I'm sorry, Alan, you had a, you raised your hand. Yeah, uh, you're missing license support testing each part of all of our things. And that's how I got introduced to him. I mean, zero. I just, in fact, uh, my wife and I were contemplating what's our emergency backup. I got it. I want to go to Walmart and buy the very best. Uh, GMRS. <laughs> FRS. <laughs> <really good luck. laughs> FRS. And then I saw pop up ads for GMRS. Is that right? Oh, you need a license. Ooh, that sounds pretty serious. So I did that. Right. And when I went to buy my GMRS radio, uh, ham radio ads probably wasn't exactly. And I, just, I just go, wow, that's, ooh, that's a granddad. I, I need that. What, what is that? And I found the closest testing was this club. Yeah. I knew nothing, had no radio. Just uh, reached out to Steve, actually, the first contact. Now, he never heard from me ever before. Super helpful. Actually, he gave me a tour of his home. You imagine that any other industry does something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. My route is paid. We've got two hundred thousand dollars of stuff all over it. Uh, mentoring, and I test it out through the help of Steve and others here. And still haven't had a radio. Uh, I do need a radio now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what do I do there? <laughs> Steve and others. That was my intro. So. To me, testing was my introduction. Okay. So, in this club was super, super helpful. We need to right. line. We're gonna we'll put that on here. I'll put I'll put that on the list. Um, other things that I'm having trouble seeing around the curves in the screen here, but our you know the, the partnership with Helping Hands of, of Pauling the Food Bank and a, a reminder I say it every month. Um, contribute to them. Uh, we have always taken up food items at club meetings, but since the pandemic shut us down uh, for a, a year and a half or so, um, we've set up a way to to accept donations for Pauly, for Helping Hands through the website. So go there. Uh, if you're willing, set it up for a, a small donation every month, and we'll get the money to Helping Hands. It does them a lot of good. We found that uh, that giving them cash goes a whole lot further than giving them canned goods from the store because they can buy it for pennies on the dollar with what we yeah. give them. They do good stuff, and we're, we're glad to be part of, of that. Um, public service, including Aries and Skywarn, and I'm going to jump into that a little bit and talk about those a, just a little bit in just a few minutes. Um, over on this side, uh, there's a lot of infrastructure that we've built. Uh, that a lot of people have had a hand in building. There's also a lot of room for help there if anybody wants to jump in and help us with some of this stuff. We've got the two meter and 440 link analog repeaters. We've also got uh, two D-Star repeaters that are linked. Echo Link and All Star that connects to these, to the, the two meter 440, Vera Packet, all of that stuff is member supported it's it's people who are members of the club who put that stuff in place and and run it uh lee mcdaniels who was on the screen is the the owner of all of the the uh of the two meter and 440 link repeaters the d star repeaters were bought by club members i don't think we used any club funds for that i think it was donations by uh, members donations the way it got started yep um trailer uh the communications trailer uh, part of the Aries organization. I'm going to talk more about that in just a minute. It's something that's available to us that we use for uh, uh, the county's needs, but it's also available to us as a club. Uh, um, repeater sites, the, the relationship with Paulding, the relationship that Paulding Aries has with the county brings us so let me let me switch slot slides and I'll well, talk about that over before, here. Before you go, I'll just okay. say one thing. Okay. Table and gathering at Dalton Ham yep. Fest. Uh, last weekend in February, I can't remember the date, but the last Saturday in February, the Dalton Ham Fest, which is I think the second largest in the state, and 
the first one on the calendar. Uh, it's up in Dalton, uh, pretty easy to get to. Uh, a lot of us gather up there and have the Silver Comet uh, Club Corner, for lack of a better term. Uh, I usually go up and get a couple of tables, and I've got a couple of folks who have raised their hand to help me fill those tables up and sell stuff. Uh, and I have looked up from standing behind that table and seen six or eight, uh, maybe 10 Silver Comet folks standing there enjoying communicating with each other, uh, mm -hmm. eyeball and uh, enjoying the ham fest. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't have something on that day, uh, come up and join us and mm -hmm. uh, have a good have a have a good day at a ham fest. Right. Okay. When is it? <clears throat> Last Saturday yeah. of February. Last Saturday of February. Twenty twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Okay. Um, Will will be there. A guarantee. <laughs> Larry? Yeah, I notice uh, you don't have anything up there for the DX facing the DX facing the DX. But the uh, Lee also has a you know, cluster out there for us. The DX chasing. Contesting and tracking. Uh, okay. Last time. It's, it's sort of. Sort yeah. Of. yeah. Um, a lot of, 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 a you might want to include a generic catalog, I mean, a generic category of special events. It's some pretty good stuff. Though. Yeah, the Hedy Lamar event, the... Um, Flight 242, Silver Comet. Flight 242, yeah. And, right. Those were oh, very successful. Good point. Good point. Scott? I was just going to say, along with the, the link repeaters there, I know in the morning when I go to work, I'll throw my call sign out. I don't think there's a day that I don't throw it out if someone doesn't come back to me and say hi and talk for a minute on my way to work. Yeah. So it's active. It's a oh, yeah. good active repeater system. So, okay. Anything else? So, well, about the, the very bottom one here, I think it's like you're the one who that one up in the road. We're one of, I think, three the National Service Club in Georgia. One of three, and the other two are um, are significantly bigger clubs. The, who are who are the other two? Gwinnett Aries and North North Fulton, maybe. No, Atlanta Radio Club. What does that What does that mean? Um, I had that pulled up and was going to describe that. Uh, give me just a second. I'll tell you what that means. It means we're special. Um, sometimes. Um, you do. And I just did that. Uh, a club that exists to go above and beyond for their communities and for amateur radio is what defines a special service club. They are leaders in the amateur radio communities who provide active training classes, publicity programs, and actively pursue technical projects and operating activities. Um, I think that describes us. I think that's a good way to describe what happens in the club. So um, I want to talk a little bit about Aries. And I, I think I don't I don't want to the, the reason I'm part of this club, the reason I'm amateur radio operator is because of an interest in, in public service for me. Um, I, I got I, I, one of the first uh, QSOs that I heard on amateur radio was an operator somewhere near these guys. I don't know wh who it was, but it was somebody on Highway 61 at the 
Paulding Bartow County line who uh, at, in a Skywarn activation, there was severe weather and the National Weather Service on their link repeater net called out and said, we need somebody on the ground at that location to give us a report. They're getting a, a tornado warning ready to go out. We need somebody on the ground to give us a report. Somebody keyed up and, and told what wind speed was. There was hail, size of the hail. I don't know who it was. I wish I did. But it was right there where you guys live uh, in the north end of the county. And as soon as they unkeyed, our weather radio went off and there was a, a tornado warning for that area uh, verified by amateur radio operators. That's what sold me on the hobby. That's when I, I took the test and got my license. I've always been interested in that. So I don't want to spend all night talking about this. <laughs> There's, I think. There is, um, I think I need to find the right. Yeah, I can't change it. Let's see if this works. Okay, so, so let me, let me just, I'll, I'll withhold what I was about to say. Um, what part of what we do is, um, among everything else, is amateur radio emergency service. Um, the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, the ARIES organization, is part of the Silver Comet Club, right? Just like everything else is, just like POTA, just like contesting, just like everything that we do. We have a different name. We have different leadership. Uh, Dave Fuller is the emergency coordinator for Paulding County um, and as, as part of ARIES, we are under his leadership. But Paulding Aries is a part of the Silver Comet Club. Okay. And I think there's been some confusion in that over the years. And I think, you know, part of it is there's the club leadership, there's the Aries leadership. Um, I can explain why that happened, but it's uh, but it's very much a part of the club. Um, and as part of the club, and part of the reason we have that little bit of separation is that we have a working relationship with Paulding County Emergency Management and Paulding County Fire. Uh, so they trust us to go into their buildings, into their facilities. Uh, fire Station 7, where we've got some of our repeaters, is an active fire station. We're in the old building, but it's an active facility. It's got real fire trucks that may be in service tonight. Um, they store a lot of their, their in-service equipment in that building. Um, they don't want to let just anybody in there. They want to know who's going in there. So um, Aries is kind of a vetted group of people who the county knows, and they know it's okay for us to be in there with them. Um, um, the Aries leadership is appointed through – Aries is a part of the ARRL, the, the league. Um, and our leadership, Dave, as our emergency – uh, coordinator was appointed. It was appointed by our section coordinator. You know that? That's right. By the, the section coordinator. The section coordinators are are appointed by the district coordinators, and everything rolls up to ARRL headquarters. So that whole infrastructure is the whole hierarchy there is is part of ARRL. Um, uh, we've got. I guess I've talked about the relationship with the county. That relationship was started a long time ago before I got here um, by some people like Ron. And I don't know if there's anybody else in the room. Tonight. Lee McDaniels uh, developed that relationship with the county. And we kept it in, in a good place so that they know they can call us and, and you know, we're there to serve them. How many years yeah. now? How many years have we been doing this? Yeah. So, hey, Dan. So, Dan. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, Lee, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We started uh, the, the half a dozen or so of us that got together in 2003 at Ron and B's house uh, and started putting all this together and hammering out the. Uh, 
the bylaws and all that kind of stuff and getting the incorporation together and and all of that. And then the next year, the 501c3 and all that. But anyway, put it all together over at Ron and B's house and got it all established. And of course, just like you said, it was, you know, put together uh, with the intertwining kind of with the with Aries as well. But uh, yeah, 2003. So theoretically, this year, 2003, the fall of this year would be our what? 20th? 25th? What is this? 30th? I can't count. How old am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, we 2003 to now would be what? 20? Well, yeah, 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So our 20th, 20 year anniversary is this year. Yeah. We need to do a special service club. A yeah. Special service. Or, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. it's a, a lot of hard work so, and effort. And there was a handful of us that started it, about six of us. And then it's grown to what it is today. And uh, yep. a lot of stuff has, has happened over the years. But anyway, I just want to throw that out there. So thanks for that. So I'm going to leave you up there for a second. So who could be a member of, of Aries? Who, who in here is a member of Holly Aries? So a good group of, of folks are, are members who can be a member. Who What does it take to be a member? All you got to do is say, I want to be a member of it. And, and we'll get you involved in it. Um, uh, it's to me. It's been it's, it's been a lot of fun getting to to uh, participate with the county and even participating with the state at GEMA exercises where we get to go. One of one of my favorite exercises that we did. The the team that we were on, the Paul DeGuerys was on, worked with a couple of other counties and Hartsfield Airport. Uh, what are they called? Their emergency management organization and United States Protective Services. FPS. Uh, Federal Protective Service. Yes. Yeah. The, the Secret Service, basically. Um, we got to work closely with them. We there's I'll tell stories all night if you let me, but there was kind of a cool story where the the Federal Protective Services guys stayed on their vehicle. They didn't come off, they didn't talk to us. They came off, they're wearing their 45s. They would do what they had to do, and then they'd go back on there, and they didn't have anything to do with us. One day, a guy came off of this thing and walked over to our little trailer sitting over in the corner of the parking lot and said, we've got this task that we've got to complete, and we don't know how to do it. Somebody told us you could help us with it. And he actually handed it to me. I was smart enough to turn around and hand it to Neil Griggs. Neil, what they were supposed to do was find the FCC identification for the tower on top of Stone Mountain in case that we needed to use that tower for something. Neil turns around, brings it up, writes down the answer, hands it back to the guy, he goes back. Now, these guys wouldn't have anything to do with us, remember? Ten minutes later, he comes walking back over there and says, my director asked if you would come over and show us how you did that. And while we're at it, she said, y'all should just all come over there and we'll give you a tour of the vehicle. <laughs> so <laughs> right. So we're you know we're not better than them. We're not you know our stuff doesn't our our systems don't work better than theirs. We're an extra resource for them, and that was a situation where we did something simple that developed trust with uh, with one of those agencies. So it's always fun to work with that kind of with those with those assets and those groups. Can I, can I say a word? Yes, sir. You mentioned the name that there's probably uh, less than a half a dozen folks in this room will recognize, much less know. Neil? Neil Griggs is the heart and soul of our repeater system working on a regular basis. Yep. There are others that help him and work with him, but Neil is the foundation. Neil worked for uh, Cox Communications. Uh, is that what? Is that who it is, Lee? Oh, CNN. Yeah, it's CNN. Lee, he who does he? Say, Lee, who does he work for? Works for uh, um, CNN. Uh, Huey. Turner. I'm trying to think. Turner. He's speaking Turner, but his name whatever, Turner anymore. Whatever Turner is. Whatever. What, whatever. Turner is. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, he works the evening shifts. You will almost never see him. But believe you me, his fingers are involved in every time you talk on that repeat. Yep, he keeps them running. 
Um, so, so a little of what we get, what the club gets as a result of the relationship with the county. Um, Aries has that relationship. As a result of that, we've got towers at both Fire Station 7 and our 955-146-955 repeater location on Macklin Road. We've got, we're, our equipment is in government-owned, government-maintained buildings. We've never had to roof the building. Um, they're, they're both maintained by the, gov by the county. We've got power in those buildings. We've got internet in those buildings. Something kind of interesting I was thinking about the other day, I talked to <laughs> Will Lyons, the county's IT director, about the internet connection at Macklin Road. It took forever to get that thing put in place. I didn't realize how significant that thing is and exactly what we've got there. We've got fiber, county-owned fiber, from the Macklin Road location to the county's um, hub, whatever that is. I don't even know where it is, but to their data center. We're on county fiber. Once we're in there, they've got a group of internet providers. I, I didn't talk to them about what it is, how they do it. I think they're doing what's called BGP peering, where they've got a bunch of people, a bunch of companies that are internet providers, and they they automatically use the best one. If one goes out, it automatically switches over. Nobody knows. I asked Will if Comcast and AT&T were part of that as, as kind of a joke. And he said, well, actually, they are, but they're not the top tier. They're down in the list somewhere. Um, I had a little business that a friend and I owned several years ago, and we're glad to not have any more. We had that kind of connectivity, that kind of internet connectivity for servers that we had in Atlanta. Our bill for the internet service, just that internet service that I just described, was like was around fifteen hundred dollars a month. We're getting it for free. The internet at the Macklin Road location should never go down unless somebody cuts that fiber. And of course, That's we got ways around that. But it's, a, it's what we're getting from them is is just phenomenal. It's it's things that we wouldn't have as a club if we didn't have the relationship with. with hey, Dan, Dan. Yes, sir. Uh, the power over there is the same way. It's uh, Georgia Power and Greystone both. It's a dual feed, so if one goes down, the other one kicks over, and uh, so the power will never go down either. Yeah. There's, there's talk, yeah, at probably a generator. I don't know if it's a generator for water department. I know sure there is talk of a generator at um, Fire Station 7 one day. They're considering doing that, and if they do that, they'll tie us into it. So... Yeah. You know that from Carol Williams, the fire department. Is it? Well, we put the antennas up meters back there and Carol Williams. Okay. Oh, that's kind of dumb. I, I don't think they've got redundant power there, um, but they're but they are talking about bringing up a generator up there. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> One of my points about what we do with Aries, you just hit it. I forgot about it. It's we we do ham radio, but we do a lot more. We we bring how many different skill sets do we have in this room? You retired guys, what did you do? I don't don't tell me. I don't want to. We don't. We'll be here all night. But how many different skill sets do we have around this room? And we're professionals at this stuff. We've done this stuff for decades. We know how to do it, and we can bring those the, our skills to the county. At one of the events that we did last year, um, the uh, the Glow Run, it was badges. Run for the Badges. It was supporting badges. Pauling Public Safety. We had the we had the Aries trailer sitting there. We were talking to our group. The county had their vehicle there. County has had their their vehicles pretty incredible. The people who run it are even more incredible. They got a problem with it. The generator was going bad. So that night, the generator went down on the trailer. Oh, their vehicle, their not, the tra not the trailer, on their vehicle. So we were there. We're there to serve them in any way we can. They were more important than us. We took our generator and connected it to that bus, and we brought them back online using appalling Aries-provided 
uh, generator. We also hooked ours back up and had both of them running off of it. So and clean the oil up too. From when they <laughs> yeah, it, it did spring a little leak when it went down. Uh, the trailer, if you haven't seen the trailer, uh, new folks, it's uh, a county provided trailer that has uh, our radio gear in it. It also has county uh, radios in it. At the the um, Parts for Heroes event, the reason that trailer was there was because they were having trouble with the bus. And they've got enough yeah. resources, again, yeah. they've got enough resources on that trailer that they can operate from the trailer as well as we can. So we provided that um, to them. Um, there's something else about the trailer that I, I just want to mention. There's, there's been some, I don't know how to describe it politely. There, there's been some um, discussions. Thank you. That's, that's a polite word about the difference in Silver Comet and Aries. And is, you know, are we different organizations? I've said earlier that we're not. Um, the trailer says, has these big letters on the side of it that say Paulding County Amateur Radio Emergency Service and Paulding County Emergency <laughs> Management Agency. The side of the trailer doesn't say Silver Comet Amateur Radio Society. That's because of the way it was built. That's because of, of, of the way we put that thing together when it was built. And I, I should have said earlier, Dave Fuller is... Um, is the coordinator, is the emergency coordinator for the county. All of this is his responsibility. He couldn't be here tonight. I talked to Dave today about what I wanted to say about this, and he's in agreement with me on this, that Aries is part of Silver Comet. I talked to the county a few months ago about the trailer, about possibly another one if we ever get to the point that we can do another trailer. And I said, I talked to Kevin New at the county, and I said, can we use the trailer? For anything other than than Aries, can the Silver Comet Club take the trailer out and use it for an event? And Kevin said, "Yes, you can." Um, couple of caveats with that: we can't. He said we can't have just anybody go up there, go in the building, and get it out because we got to know who's in that building. But he said, if you call me and say this person needs to come and get the trailer for a Silver Comet event. If Silver Comet is, is if, if, if Aries is in agreement with that, he would call the fire station and ask the firefighters to meet us over there and let whoever we want to get that trailer, grab it and pull it out and take it where we want it to go. Uh, they don't have a problem with Silver Comet using the trailer. They consider it ours. I said, well, what if, if either on this trailer or on the other trailer, what if we wanted to put a logo on it that said Silver Comet beside the Aries labor? He said, of course you can do that. If you want to do that, you can do it. The assets belong, they would go through Aries to get that, but it is part of the club. So any thoughts? There there have been some hard feelings, I feel like, about the two groups. And I want, I want to set that straight because we're all the same group of people, right? If you're interested in emergency service, come join us, go to uh, uh, Forsyth with us, uh, become a member of Aries and go out and do things and we'll do things with the club. Any comments? Uh, and I promise I'll move on. Um, there's still plenty of things. It's just one part. Right. It's not detailed. Right. Right. Absolutely. There, okay. There's a lot there that we do. And I mean, to me, in my mind, they're all equal. I'm sorry I dwelt on that one so long. Uh, it's it's one that's important to me. If we let Steve do this instead of me, we would have been talking about POTA for as long as I talked about Aries. <laughs> so Bingo. let's move on. And this is going to be. Greg would have had some input on that. One. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So budget, the 23 budget. Um, I like uh, the, Troy put those words up there. We get a lot out of the club. Significant amount of volunteer work happens to make it 
all work together. Um, we got to deal with we, we you know we we got to live within our budget. Um, we took the board took a look at our expenses over the last few years, and um, at, we're working on a, a budget for 2023. We don't have it ready to go out just yet. It's it, we're going to send it out. You'll see all the details. There's the income side of it. Looks kind of sparse, doesn't it? Um, right now, our the only guaranteed income we have as a club, the income that lets us do all of the things that we want to do is views. Um, we have lived for the history of this club on a grant from IBM that stood that Ryan and, I, and before Ryan worked that league um, uh, fought for that grant every year and what I remember of the grant is that it's been two thousand dollars a year. Bogged down with other things they had to get done, and he asked me to pick it up. So I picked it up, and then for the next several years, it was 2000. Right. Then about four years ago, it dropped down to 1000, and then the last year, it dropped down to uh, three years ago, it dropped to 500. And this year, we didn't. So, it, so and for and the company IBM had during the last year, uh, they fired. So, as of yet, I just said a couple of days ago, they have not officially started things going yet, so I don't know how it's going to go. But but we did and it's for the for the Zoom callers started at three thousand dollars now it's down to five five hundred dollars and we did we ever get it for last year Ron yeah. we did get it but it was at the end of the year Very we end of the year. we had pretty much given up on getting anything from them but we got five hundred bucks from them so so we're we need to move away from depending on that grant we don't know if we're going to get anything this year uh, so the the uh, club views for what we've got. This expense piece, that's not everything. That's some of the heavy hitters. That's some of the, the big pieces of the the uh, the expenses. One that we left off of here is is postage. The, the P.O. box that we have as a club, we used to have two P.O. boxes. We had one for Silver Comet. We had one for Aries. We cut out the Aries box. Uh, and we only have the one for Silver Comet. I think it's it's over two hundred dollars a year now, just for a post office box. Plus, there there are some other expenses. Meetings we were paying, um, we were paying the Chamber of Commerce two hundred fifty dollars a year for meeting space before COVID. Once COVID shut everything down, the Chamber decided that they were not going to let anybody, even <laughs> members, meet in that facility anymore. And we just, Lee, I believe, talked to them very recently, and they're sticking to that. Uh, we can't use that space. It's not available to us anymore. So we started looking around at places to meet, and we found a lot of great places, and they were $200 a month to $500 a month. And if, if we found anything that was cheaper, it was, it was too small. So, you know, a big thank you to Eric and to Greater Hope Baptist Church for the space that we were using, that we have been using for the last few months. Um, we were paying $720 a year for that space. Um, through Ryan's help, we have been able to switch that to Mount Nebo. Uh, and, and Mount Nebo is not charging us to use the space. So thank you, Mount Nebo. Methodist, and thank you, Ron, for making that work. That helps a lot with the budget. Um, we've got budgeted for this year $200 for the Pickett's Mill type event. Don't know if that's going to be there all year, although we do have another day in the park planned for Pickett's Mill on March 11th. Put that date down and plan to be there. How many, how many went to the first day in the park at Pickett's Mill. Was it a good day? Was it fun? I've heard so much from, from people who came by that day who either were there and activated. For those who don't know what we did, we had the group shelter at Pickett's Mill for the day. And we had, I don't know, half a dozen or more POTUS stations there set up in the parking lot. Six or seven in the parking lot and two or three in the building. Right. So you could go 
walk around and see uh, portable activations. You could sit down and work POTA stations. Um, you, you, could so, see, you, you could see about as many different portable antennas as there were stations, and some of yep. them you could see two or three portable antennas per station. Right. Uh, right. Early in the afternoon, we did a uh, portable antenna presentation that talked about a lot of what you saw out in the parking lot. We also did a brief presentation on balance and yep. uh, the different types and where to use them. And once again, pointed out in the parking lot for a number of examples. Right. And we have food. And, and we, we had, had food. food. <laughs> it wouldn't be ham radio club if we didn't have food, right? So, I mean, we, we got one plan. We don't have an don't have the agenda set yet, but but put it on your calendar and plan to come out. The only cost to you for that is you have to pay for parking in the in $5. the state park five dollars, or if you've got the parking and, pass that says yeah, it covers in the historic, uh, historic site. site. Yep, um, it's not a state park. That's, that was a lot of fun. For, for me, I know, and for a lot of people. So, I but we got two hundred dollars in the budget for that. Guess how much it costs to do one day at Pickett's Mill? Two hundred. Two hundred dollars. That's one day. I want to do one of these a quarter or more. I want to do. We said, uh, and I'll put another slide up in a minute talking about the just showing all the things that we said we want to do. I want to stop focusing on just this meeting and I want to go out and do things. I want to put things together and I want to learn new things in the field. Y'all agree with me? So I want to double that. I mean, I want to, I want to make that at least once a quarter. So let's make that a thousand dollars website. We're spending more on the website than that. It's uh, the web hosting is free websites. I'm actually hosting it. And, it's, and we're not paying for it, uh, but some other costs involved in hosting it, it's over $100. We're going to try to cut it back. Insurance, insurance on equipment that we own, liability insurance to cover us when we break windows out of the back of cars at, <laughs> at field day. <laughs> and yes, we did. <laughs> but it, it turned out good. Um, uh, whose window was it, Jack? Oh, that was uh, <laughs> Mark Smart. <laughs> um, shot a uh, came, came up from Florida, spent a day at field day, and got his back glass knocked out. <laughs> so, uh, so, the insurance is necessary. I'll point out that the equipment that was up here in the corner a little while ago the 955, the 440 repeater, um, uh, the D Star repeaters I don't know if they're listed on there or not. The, the, uh, they were. The analog repeaters are owned by that guy right there. Um, the club doesn't pay for those repeaters. We don't pay insurance for those repeaters. We don't pay to, to maintain those repeaters. Um, Lee and some donations uh, and, and Neil uh, keep those things running. But every but the other things that we, we manage, uh, insurance <laughs> has to cover um, equipment maintenance last year we spent I think it was about eleven or twelve hundred dollars on a an IC7100 ICOM radio for the trailer. I'm not gonna say the Aries trailer, it's for the trailer, it's ours to use if we if if we uh, need to use it. Um, but normally our maintenance for the things that we that the club funds is somewhere between a hundred and two hundred dollars. So we're, we put two hundred dollars on there, seventeen hundred and eighty dollars. Notice the problem from here to there. Um, yeah, and that number doesn't have everything. It doesn't have everything saying. in it. There are other things that are in there that will be that will be on the budget when we send it out. So we got it. We got a discrepancy. If we're we're not getting what we were getting for the grant, we got to make up a difference in it. Um, Meeting space helps with that. Taking the the meeting space, uh, the the seven hundred and twenty dollars uh, out helps a lot. We're looking to trim other things as we can. Troy's comment: We don't want to go completely bare bones and eliminate things like Pickett's Mill. I want to do more things like Pickett's Mill. It's that's more fun than paying for insurance. 
what that results in, the board met uh, in December and made the decision to increase our dues to $30 a, a year. I almost said money. That'd be yeah, bad, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it? No, $30. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> well, yeah, we did a lot of stuff if y'all did $30 a year. Um, to $30. Right now, it's $20 a year. We're going to raise the dues to $30 a year, effective March 1st. What's today? January 10th. Who hasn't renewed their dues? There's your deadline. <laughs> Renew your dues by the end of February, and it's it's 20 bucks. So, but starting for anybody after that in next year, we're asking, it, it turns out to be 83 cents more a month. And it's going to make up for some of what we've lost from, from that income over there. Any questions, any comments about that? Any concerns? Well, I think um, Stan did a survey of yep, good point. around this Atlanta area, and if most of them are, uh, have gone to thirty dollars a month a year, or or headed that way. Some have it. From what we, from what I know about some of the clubs who have it, they're not doing as much as we're do we're doing now, and we want to do more. So. Um, let me let me add one thing here. I asked Dan. I didn't see it anywhere. To have fifteen hundred dollars worth of dues for income today, we need seventy five members. Yep. As of a few days ago, uh, forty six we were today. at forty six paid. Paid. If we have fifty members. At thirty dollars a year, we are at fifteen hundred. If we have seventy-five, that will give us a little bit of a cushion there to allow us to come over here and do some more of those things. Not all right there. <laughs> yeah, so just just to put the, the numbers of where we have been and where we are today. So, and I'm Larry. Any progress on the AWRL grant? There, we need, there are grants available. We have not written for a grant yet. We, we've talked about that. I, we, we didn't make any progress on Alan has volunteered to write the grant for us. Um, I think whatever that, we want to do. What I understand is we started about a year behind when we should have started. Right. To make that happen. We, we gave Alan a semi-impossible task. Do eight months worth of work in the next two weeks. <laughs> when we agreed to apply for the grant, um, we just started too late. So... We didn't reach a consensus. Uh, we basically had a month to get our information and it just wasn't quick enough. Yeah. But this year, we're going to start very early and we're going to apply. And nothing stopped us from applying multiple. But you have to remember the restrictions yeah. on the grants are pretty tight, right? So, in the most restrictive 40. case, I'm confident we could get a grant. But 100% of the public will go for that purpose. Uh, it wouldn't go to the general budget. Right. Right. Well, uh, yeah. In, in the most restricted. And then you have to prove it. Yeah. 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 There are restrictions on that. So, anyway, it is an opportunity. We had a little practice run last year. <laughs> and this year, we're going to really do it. Uh, we have plenty of lead time. Mm -hmm. uh, however, just know it's not going to go in the general budget. It's yeah. Those applications are very specific. 100% of the grant goes to whatever they need. No, it's still worth doing. It's still helpful. Yeah. We might be able to take something out of the budget and make it a special project and go for a grant. Um, so, yeah, I, the, I watched one of the videos, uh, one of the webinars about doing the grants, and it, it, it says they're expecting a lot. They're, you, you don't like the, we talked about doing a, something like building a uh, 
a program to do education in the schools. They don't want you to write a grant saying that you're going to create this program. They want you to say, we've met with the school system. We've demoed what we're going to do with them. They have given us permission to come and do it. Now we're ready to request the funds. So you got to do a lot of work up front to get those. And, and I think the same is true of the revitalization grant. We ought to watch for them. There are grants out there for other things, even for even for small things. If we needed uh, something that we're going to use in the community, we could go to places like Home Depot and ask for smaller grants and things like that. So let's watch them. Charles, you had a... Yeah, I was just going to ask you, is the insurance, uh, is that through the ARRL? Lee? Yes. Yes, is but it, The insurance is through ARRL? That's correct, yes. Okay. So, anything else? Uh, Any other? The other way to help with the budget is increase the number of members. Right. So, we increase it, we're going to have a bigger place and more pizza. Well, yeah, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> bring a friend. Yeah, we were last year. Last last year we had I think eighty three paid. Yeah, and but we have been as high as a hundred and over a hundred. We James told me he had over a hundred. So I think when COVID happened and so forth, we went down. So yeah, obviously if we had a hundred members paying at thirty bucks a year, that's we've got a lot of we can do a lot of things. We have a lot of fun with that. There, there's the number is a little bit inflated in terms of what it brings in because of the test because of these these test people um, giving away free memberships. Um, <laughs> When, when somebody passes a test, we offer them a free year membership in the club. And I think that's fantastic. I wouldn't change it for anything. Uh, some of the people don't join because they're from out of the community. Some join and stay for a year and go away. Some, how many people are here because of that free membership? Okay, couple. And how many are here, or three, how many are here, how many took test their technician license class from one of the club sessions. Okay, Ed did. So um, anyway, that's- they, they were some more hands, they just didn't get very high up. They, just, they didn't get very high up, okay. Kiefer was not proud of me. <laughs> I didn't see it. Um, so no concerns with that. Nobody thinks we're doing the wrong thing. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. I appreciate that. Uh, we're we're going to send the budget out, and we'll include uh, we'll include that. We'll go ahead and send the announcement out about the. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> as long as one way or the other, that's right. So this didn't work right on the screen. Something happened there. So so the next part of this, what do you want the club to be? And we've talked about this. Uh, I want I want to keep talking about it. And I want to do some of the things. Uh, Troy did this survey um, a year or more ago. Like 2018. 2018. So a good, yeah, a good while ago. So 2019. So sent out a, a survey. And Troy, I picked the top 20 uh, by number of mentions in that survey of things that we want to do. There's another one down here that we did a few months ago, just in a club meeting, talking about things that we want to do. Um, what do we do on this thing? What do you want to see? As important as that, what can you help us do? There, that might be the most important question. Yeah, you don't want me and Steve doing all of these. <laughs> so we've got Kyle is a new member, and he's going to he volunteered to do a weather presentation. I'm look. I'm kind of looking forward to having a meteorologist do a weather presentation to us. Um, there are a lot of people in this room who, who you may not be, the, the uh, best in the world at any one of these things, but you may have gone out in the field and done some of these things, and you you may be able to tell us what you what you did and help us all learn. So think about what you can do. I'm going to send this out. Everybody, look at this stuff. 
and and say, you know, help us know, chime in and say, I'll help do one of those. I'll either do it or I'll help do it. And Same. we'll put some of these things on. Give us, when Dan sends this out, everybody take a minute or two, pick one of those things that you can help us with, and say, I can help with this. I don't know a lot. I've done some. If there's somebody else I can work with, I can help with that. It's always easier to do it if there's more than one person standing up here doing the thing. So so um, if you're willing to participate in one of them, let, let's do some of this stuff. And I, uh, I pulled Troy in at the previous POTA thing. I said, Troy, here, here's my outline for the antennas. Will you please do this? Because I don't want to talk through both of these presentations. I've got a lot to cover on the bowing side of it. And uh, Troy stepped up and did that. We need some more folks to... What do you... Right. What do you want it to be? Want this club to be? And what... What are you... What can you help with? Willing to help with? A um, couple of things I wanted to mention. We did... Let's see, this is the second one. This is the one that we did in a club meeting. Uh, I want somebody to do that one, so, and I'll help with that. What I know about the rig expert, Edwin can do it. You um, have to turn it on, please. <laughs> <laughs> you have to charge the batteries first. Um, uh, show and tell topics, We can. every one of us can do something in that. Um, I, I like this one. I don't know who suggested that, but how did you try to help out to get their news on the air? Step one, um, antenna down. <laughs> well, flying a Black Hawk, you know, we'll, we'll see how that stuff gets done. I mean, there, there are things that we can do for, for presentations like that. I talked to the National Weather Service. That's a great tour going down to see the National Weather Service. I've never seen them launch a balloon. They're not doing, pre they're not doing tours right now, and they don't have a plan right now to restart them. Uh, as soon as they do, we'll get on their schedule to restart them. I started thinking about, we talk about doing National Weather Service, uh, uh, the air traffic control. What else can we do? What other tours would y'all like to do? One of the things I looked at, I want to see if anybody's interested in doing it. What if we did a tour of WSB's studios in Atlanta? Anybody interested in going to Atlanta to see what they do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It costs 10 bucks a person if you want to do it. I would be glad to organize it. I wonder even about telling them what we do. And uh, I know uh, Johnny Beckman passed away a year or so ago. He was an active ham in the Cab County, I think. So they know what ham radio is at WSB. If we tell them that. Yeah. WSB, yes, he did. Yeah. That's correct. That's because they may not want to talk to us about that, but let's see what they can show. I asked, how many hands did you see? Up I didn't that? see a lot. Uh, let me ask again. Anybody interested in going? Okay, hands way up in there. <laughs> was that TV or radio? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get in touch with them. And I'll get in touch with them and send the information out about it, and we'll see what we can do. Hey, I bet I um, saw you that day. Did you? Were you going to say something? Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask about the ATC tour. Um, Is that? Well, I think the last time we did a uh, National Weather Service tour, we the group also went down to air traffic control. Anybody? Yeah, Brian arranged yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Those separate you, would you want to go down there to Hampton without going to National Weather Service if we could get into air traffic control? That was a real interesting tour, I thought. Yeah, yeah we can ask. We can have Brian ask. We, let's ask Brian to give us a tour of his 747, right? At a ride. All in county <laughs> um, so so what else um think about this stuff tell us what you want to see next we need to at some point start prioritizing 
and pulling out things that we can pull off. And we need your help to present them. Charles? We've got to start putting stuff together for the March 11th activity. So uh, send us uh, send yep. us two or three things at the top of your list. and Because uh, I see two or three things and there's something that I want to do that's not on there. Uh, what? And we'll see how many we can accommodate. What else are you thinking about? Um, using pest equipment. We got somebody who does an oscilloscope, has been talking about an oscilloscope class. I'd love to see what Charles can do with that. Um, uh, it's let's... already been written, and some of the guys I've sent out copies to just to have them uh, sort of kind of play with it a little bit. So, so okay. Well, tell us what you're willing to do, what you can do, and we're going to start reaching out yep. and and see what we can see what of this stuff we can pull off. Like to mention, yes, sir. There's going to be a space space station change over here the next month. There's going to be three amateur radio operators going up on that line. Huh. So, so we ought to have more activity. Give us a lot more opportunity to communicate. Right, right. That's another fun thing to do. It's kind of a, it's kind of a quick hit. It's they're they're only up. You can only talk to them for a few minutes when they fly over. Um, but that's a, a fun thing to do. Satellites, uh, any kind of satellites. So that's uh, something we ought to have. Great deal of power to talk to them and just bring. A great deal of time. A, a strong arm. <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts? Solar power. Okay. Uh, it's a fourth one down. I'm I'm looking for my notepad. Oh, it's on there. Fourth one down. I'm putting his name on it. Oh. Uh, yeah. You said you can do solar power. I have a okay. solar power system. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. We'll get that scheduled. Okay. That one. Okay. That one. Um, we did. We went over field day. Yeah. Right. Bring it in. Field day. Funny you mentioned field day. I've had a lot of several people ask me about winter field day. Do y'all want to do winter field day? We need somebody to coordinate it if we want to do it. If we can do it at Fire Station 7, we can find another place. We're kind of late at this point to find a place. Station 7 is available if we want to do that. We'll just have to let the county know. That's good when they be in the snow. Be inside, though. <laughs> That's what I mean. Outside, it's when they be walking in the snow. Right. Where, do we want to try it? It's late to start it. I was told last year we started way late on summer field day. We need to start it now too, and we need a team to manage that. Uh, we to uh, coordinate the site, figure out where we're going to have it, um, uh, put it together. We I'd love to have somebody help Cherie with food. Well, we have people helping with food, but Cherie does so much for us anytime we're doing anything like that. She needs a team of her. She is a team, but she needs a team of her own. So can somebody take on field day as coordinating it? This this is your field day. This is not my and Dan's field day. Think about it. If you don't want to say it tonight, we need somebody to, to help coordinate those things. Um, yes, sir. I don't know where it fits, but... Um... I think one way to expand ham radio nationally is engage corporate America. They're, they're like right with ball. So uh, I pitched and pitched my company, and next next week or a week after, I'm actually presenting to uh, our head of corporate business continuity and its whole team. Huh. The whole team. This is a very privileged. Opportunity. Right. So my vision is every corporation in the United States needs to have a backup communication plan called ARIES. Right. 
uh, they don't even know about it. Right. But uh, the pregnant question with them is, okay, if you lose power and phones, what are you going to do? And none of them have a real good plan. So if we could put together, I'm actually going to do it, a communication backup plan for a corporation. This is what I'm presenting to my company. If they'll bite on that, then I have a template that uh, I want to expand to more with Right. Uh, a, lot, a lot of ifs there, but my presentation is to the next week, the week after. And I'd like to say this club supports what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. I will present my presentation to you, make sure you agree with that. Okay. Uh, right now, there's no commitment, but. And you have a terrarium. Okay. Um, that's that's not have, a back, back up emergency. That, sure, you, yeah. know, you say for commercial purposes, in an emergency, you can be sick of anything. Yeah. Right. It's for emergency. You can't, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't sell your product with it. Right. But yeah. for communication. That's right. So Years ago, IBM spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to put equipment in all a lot of different areas that IBM had. And the reason for that equipment was so that if they had emergencies in that area, they could locate the people yep. using amateur radio in an emergency situ type situation. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. Exactly. Uh, you know, yep. they, they did that, and part of it was used during Andrew in Florida. So, uh, they, because they had emergencies where there was a lot of IBMers that were, you know, in. Uh, Situation where they didn't know whether they could find them. Right. So, so, so services good. that are 24 by 7, like the company I work for, we do payment processing. It's 24 by 7, 365. And we have five major locations in the world. Right. Like, if you lose phones, they actually right now have no way to do it. So, right. they're very interested. Yep. I'd like to see the plan. Love to see your plan. The hard part you're competing with today is the internet. No, it, that's gone. It, it's it's gone. That's the whole point. Right. Back up. Okay. Right. Have no plan right now. But that's a that's the oh, the okay. competition you have though. It's going to be part of. It's going to be the internet. Well, right. Most most okay. business phones today are internet based. Um, right. And we we've run into thing in, even in exercises for the county where. Uh, we, we've gone into hospitals and say, you know, your all your systems are down. Now communicate, and they pull out their cell phone and start communicating. And, and then somebody says, "Put that down." Now communicate. It didn't. It didn't. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> okay. That's uh, what. What else? I mean, any other thoughts? I've stand, stood up here and rambled for a long time, and I appreciate y'all filling in the blanks for me. Uh, anything else? Okay. We're going to do some presentations and some activities this year. Y'all going to come, and you're going to help us with it. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Anything else, Steve? No. We'll be looking for your emails with hands in the air. Yep. It's going to be fun. Suggestions, and I'll help with. Okay, that's, I guess, is it for tonight.